Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, uh, dear friends, um, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you here today in Abu Dhabi to our panel to discuss with you together uh, and including our sophisticated experts, uh, a topic that has come and to such an essential value and necessity in our lives, maybe sometimes with us really not noting it. What makes me especially happy is that we might meet in, in person again, um, something that we would have taken for granted for all our lives, but uh, at least until two years ago, another thing what we always expected to, to being granted for all our life, um, and this brings me to the topic of this session, um, maybe as part of our life, as part of our lifestyle, um, is the excess and the ongoing supply of critical raw materials. They are omnipresent in our daily lives. The planes that brought us to Abu Dhabi, the cars that drove us to this beautiful venue, the phone that helped us to schedule the meeting and we hold in our hands most of the day, the food we will have fun later on, all these things likely wouldn't exist in, without critical raw materials and our, again, ongoing access to these. They help us to create the society of today. They are the key for the society we live in and without them, the society of, especially of tomorrow, will be impossible to create. This society of tomorrow, we aspire to live in a society of climate neutral, neutrality, of sustainability, of ongoing technological achievements in health, mobility, communication, and, and ongoing on, is constantly driven by critical raw materials. As we aim to achieve the climate target goals of the Paris treatment, we need critical raw materials like vanadium for renewable, renewable energies for battery technologies. The European or the worldwide Green Deal will be the guiding principle for politics for decades. Green parties and parties with a strong focus on climate change have become a dominant force. Being a German, having had an election last weekend, I know what I'm talking about. Climate-focused politi no, climate politics are here to stay in Europe. And so it's the need for the economy and for the industry to have a constant and secure supply of necessary resources in order to comply with the Green Deal. Beyond energy, an ever-growing global population demands access to critical raw materials required for the production of fertilizers like phosphate. Advancement in communication and mobility demand critical raw materials, artificial intelligence, digitalization, and whatever, it's always critical raw materials. This brings us to the question of demand and supply. As the global demand is already high and will some kind skyrocket throughout the coming decades, the question of supply and accessibility arises more than ever. It is, it will be, it is already a geopolitical um, thing for the future. The projected increase in demands will thus incre likewise increase their dependence on China and other countries which are beyond the Western Hemisphere, sometimes geographically and sometimes politically. The geopolitic relevance behind the, this topic we are going to discuss today becomes very clear. How will the European, how will the United States and other countries and regions handle the existing and future question of these global supply materials? Which political answers are possible? Which new players can potentially, uh, potentially completely shift this landscape? We, 
on what are the risks from a security or economical standpoint associated with the US, with the European and, and European efforts to build own value change and form strategic partnerships that we need for the future. To give an answer on these and maybe other questions, I'm delighted to introduce three prime experts on that topic. Happy to join today is on, on that stage is Ms. Ingvild Tebringda, I forgot, uh, who has served as Norway's Minister for Oil and Energy, Minister of Public Security in the Ministry of Justice and Public Security, who is now a board member in the Anglo-Norwegian mining company, Norge Mining. Ingvild will show us how the country of Norway com could completely shift the balance of global supply of critical raw materials. Peter Handley, head of the Energy Intensive Industry Raw Materials and Hydrogen in the European Commission, will highlight to us which efforts the European Union is making in order to respond to the question of supply. David Wormser, founder and executive member of the Delphi Analysis Group and former senior advisor to the US Vice President Cheney on Middle East, will present to us answers the United States could potentially give to the geopolitical dimensions of our topic. Mm -hmm.